an anthology of readings of Almighty God's words. Interpretations of the Mysteries of God's Words to the Entire Universe Addendum Chapter 2 When people behold the practical God, when they personally live their lives with, walk side by side with, and reside with God Himself, they put aside the curiosity that has been in their hearts for so many years. The knowledge of God previously spoken of is only the first step. Although people have knowledge of God, there remain many persistent doubts in their hearts. Where did God come from? Does God eat? Is God vastly different from ordinary people? For God is dealing with all people an easy thing, mere child's play? Is all that is spoken from God's mouth the mysteries of heaven? Is all that He says higher than the things said by all created beings? Does light shine from God's eyes? And so on and so forth. This is all that people's notions are capable of. These things are what you should understand and enter into before all else. In people's notions, the incarnate God is still a vague God. If not through practical knowledge, people would never be able to understand me and would never behold my deeds in their experiences. It is only because I became flesh that people are unable to grasp my will. If I had not become flesh and were still in heaven, still in the spiritual realm, then people would know me. They would bow down and worship me and talk of their knowledge of me through their experiences. But what would be the use of such knowledge? What would be its value as a point of reference? Could the knowledge that comes from people's notions be real? I do not want the knowledge of people's brains. I want practical knowledge. My will is revealed among you at all times, and at all times is there my illumination and enlightenment. When I act directly in divinity, it is not filtered through the brain and there is no need to add seasoning. It is a direct act of divinity. What are people capable of? Has everything from the time of creation until today not been personally carried out by me? In the past, I talked of the sevenfold intensified spirit, but no one was able to understand his substance even when they were aware of it, they were incapable of complete understanding. When I work in humanity governed by divinity, because this work is carried out in circumstances that people believe to be not supernatural but normal, it is referred to as the work of the Holy Spirit. When I work directly in divinity, because I am unconstrained by people's notions and because I am not subject to the limits of the supernatural as it exists within their notions, this work has an immediate effect. It goes to the heart of the matter and it cuts straight to the point. As a result, this step of work is purer. It is twice as fast people's understanding accelerates and my words increase, causing all people to rush to catch up. Because the effect is different, because the means, the nature, and the content of my work are not the same, and furthermore, because I have officially begun to work in the flesh 
in view of the foregoing. This step of work is referred to as the work of the sevenfold intensified spirit. It is not something abstract. Following developments in the means by which I work in you, and following the arrival of the kingdom, the sevenfold intensified spirit begins to work, and this work constantly grows deeper and more intense. When all people behold God, and they all see that the Spirit of God is among man, the full significance of my incarnation is made clear. There is no need to summarize. People know this naturally. Considering many respects, the methods by which I work, the steps of my work, the tone of my words today, and so on. Only what comes from my mouth now are the utterances of the seven spirits in the true sense. Though I also spoke in the past, that was during the stage of building the church. It was like the preface and table of contents in a novel. It was without substance. Only the utterances of today can be called the utterances of the seven spirits in terms of their true substance. The utterances of the seven spirits refers to the utterances that come from the throne, which is to say, they are uttered directly in divinity. The moment when my utterances turned to revealing the mysteries of heaven was the moment when I spoke directly in divinity. In other words, unconstrained by humanity, I directly revealed all of the mysteries and circumstances of the spiritual realm. Why do I say that I was previously subject to the limits of humanity? This requires explanation. In people's eyes, no one is capable of revealing the mysteries of heaven. If not for God himself, no one on earth could know of these mysteries. Thus, I address people's notions and say that the reason I did not reveal any mysteries in the past was because I was subject to the limits of humanity. More specifically, however, this is not the case. The content of my words differs as my work differs, and thus, when I began to perform my ministry in divinity, I revealed mysteries. In the past, I had to work in circumstances that all people viewed as normal, and the words that I spoke were capable of being achieved in people's notions. When I began to reveal mysteries, not one of these was attainable by people's notions. They were unlike human thinking. So, I officially began to turn to speaking in divinity, and these were the utterances of the seven spirits in the true sense. Though the words of the past were utterances from the throne, they were spoken upon the basis of what was attainable by people, and thus were not uttered directly in divinity. As a result, they were not the utterances of the seven spirits in the true sense.